Testament. So welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Excel Island live streaming section. Today is day 18 of 100 days of Power BI and the goal and objective of this live stream is to learn and master the data analytics to Microsoft Power BI over the next 100 days. And we've been doing so well, we've been so consistent with the learning and showing up consistently. Today is day 18 and welcome to the channel if an existing subscriber. Welcome back if you're welcome if you're a new uh, subscriber. So basically, we'll just go back to the learning. Also, all the exercise files, Power BI files, data sets that you can use to practice along with me is already linked under the YouTube description. Do make sure to download that, those files and practice along with me. If you've missed any previous session or you want to start from scratch, I encourage you to go back to day one of the live stream to catch up on what we've done so far so you won't get confused. Or whatever but now we're standing if you want to start from here continue with me feel free to go ahead so without further ado let's get started so basically we are using the data camp platform for this journey and this was i used same platform when i started the data analysis in sql career track or uh, earlier when i started live streaming on the journey so if i go on that career track on the data camp platform or uh, while that is coming up don't forget to support the channel by hitting that subscribe button Give the video a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. So basically so far, let me just give you a quick uh, overview of what we've done so far. We've covered the whole career track actually contain our uh, 17 courses for the data, data analysis in Power BI. It contains 17 courses estimated for 48 hours. And we've covered introduction to Power BI, introduction to DAX in Power BI, data visualization in Power BI. And we did a case study on at least from day 12 to day 15 or 16 we tackled this case study you can catch the case study on the channel and i plan to also do a special video uh, on this case study and upload it to the to the channel so we, we continue on the fifth course which is data preparation in power bi from day 17 so we actually started this on day 17 and the goal is to use each live stream to complete each chapter in this whole course so we just continue from here today and of course, we have a lot of content to cover, a lot of lessons to cover with some project also. So let's get back to learning. I just click on continue course from here to continue the learning journey. So we are moving to the second chapter. So we did the first chapter in this data preparation in Power BI on day 17, which is profiling your data. An introduction to the Power Query in Power BI. We are moving to the next one, which is Data Preview Features in Power Query. So the goal is to cover this whole section on this live stream. So we are definitely going to do that. Then we have Data Manipulation and Numerical Transformation in Power Query. I think this 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 particular chapter is not actually going deep in Power Query, but it is giving you a strong and good background to Power Query. So if you continue, I'll just quickly download the slides for Chapter Two. So I can always open that up on my other screen right here. I'll just download that real quick. It's downloading. So let me just put on my headsets. So I can listen to the instructor. I'll just open that real quick here. So let's continue learning. In this video, we will learn a useful feature of Power Query that can help you quickly summarize key characteristics of your data set. We'll use this feature to help us identify and fix common errors that might appear in our data. Power Query, as we've mentioned previously, is a data preparation tool that helps us transform our data into a state that is more suitable for analysis. To do this, we should have a way of quickly investigating our dataset to allow us to diagnose what transformations are needed. This is where the data preview features of Power Query come in. To access the data preview features, you simply enable them in the View ribbon of Power Query. 
there are three types of data previews, column distribution, column quality, and column profile. We will learn the exact nature of these features as well as when to use them in the following slides. An important thing to note when working with large datasets is that by default, data previews will only analyze the data in the first 1000 rows of your dataset. However, you can change that option by clicking on the column profiling based on the top 1000 rows box present at the bottom left of the Power Query editor. The main reason to use data preview features is to help you find errors and inconsistencies in your dataset. As you apply your transformations step by step, you can also see how the characteristics of your dataset change. So it's also a great way to see if the transformation you applied had the desired effect. Finally, they are a powerful tool to quickly summarize the data in your columns and help you take decisions about what transformation to apply next. The various data preview features are all unique in their own way. So let's see what they are used for. Let's start with column distribution. This allows us to preview the distributions of our columns by displaying a small histogram under each column name. This feature is particularly useful for when you're checking a column for duplicate values. It also shows us the count of unique and distinct values in the column to see how many duplicates, if any, exist. The next feature is called column quality. When you need to check if your data contains any missing values or error values, this is the feature to use. It will calculate the percentage for each of these and show them underneath all column names. Finally, we have the column profile feature, which combines aspects from both previous features. The key difference is that column profiling only works for one column at a time. This enables it to display much more detailed statistics, such as average, minimum, maximum, and standard deviation. You can also find out the distribution and number of unique and distinct values for that column. This feature only works when you select a single column. Since data previews are most often used when you are looking for errors in your dataset, they also come with quick access to some of the most common transformations that you will use to deal with those errors. To view those transformations, simply hover over the output of the relevant data preview feature you're using and a small tooltip will appear. There, you will find a suggested transformation marked with the light bulb icon. You can also click on the three dots to expand a menu containing additional useful transformations. Now, let's put these features to good use by cleaning up our data set. Okay, let's put it to good use. I can actually play with this feature. So, data preview differences. So the data preview features in Power Query allow you to analyze the data set while you are transforming it. However, each of them has a different use. Let's test your understanding by classifying these data analysis steps into the different data preview features, which are most appropriate for helping you accomplish them. The following is a list with a series of data preparation and analysis steps. Drag each step to the data preview feature, which is most appropriate for enabling you to accomplish that step. So column distribution, column quality, and column profile. So the column distribution is a preview, is used on all columns. So what you need to understand first is column distribution and column quality applies to all columns, where column profile only works when you, have, when you select a particular column. So if you can log that in, you can see, view the mean, standard deviation, minimum and maximum for one column. The same for one column. That's definitely column profile. Check all columns for duplicate values. That should be column distribution. Then view the detailed distribution of one column. View the detailed distribution of one column. I'll still go for column profile. View the distribution of all columns. That should be column distribution. 
check all columns for error values so we want to check our valid error empty that will be column quality check all column for missing values that should be column quality also let's submit that cool we know that so if we are checking for one column one column that's column profile color quality is for errors missing value and empty values whatever why for duplicate values and the distribution of all columns that is column distribution So let's continue our learning. In this demo, we will learn how to use Power Query data preview features to help us diagnose and fix some common errors that appear in data. The data set we are working with today is a sample of 99 movie titles from the popular IMDb movie rating database. We have 13 columns of various data types in this data set, but not all of these columns are going to be useful for analysis in their current state. We can use the data preview features to inform the state of our columns and help us decide which columns need fixing. Let's activate the column distribution feature first by going to the view ribbon. This is a handy feature for summarizing the contents of a column, particularly how many unique and how many distinct values are in that column. The first thing we notice here is that the language column has only one distinct value and zero unique values, meaning that all of the movies in this sample are in English. Since it doesn't add much information, we can remove this column, as long as we make sure to inform our report users that this dataset contains only English movies. Second, we can observe that the color column has four distinct and two unique values we can clearly see that there are some missing data points in this column, so we should investigate this a little further. Let's enable the column quality feature. We can see there are 11 missing data points in this column. This is usually a problem, but you can also notice that almost all of the non-empty observations fall under one value. This means there is not a lot we can learn from this column. Once again, we can remove the column and mention it to our audience that we are only analyzing color movies. We can also use the column distribution feature to detect whether there are duplicate records in our dataset. It is expected that the number of distinct director names is more than the number of unique director names, meaning there are some directors that worked on multiple different movies. However, the movie titles should all consist of unique records, so that every movie is represented exactly once in this sample. Since this is not the case, we should remove the duplicates from the movie title column. Now our dataset has no repeated movie titles, leaving us with 91 unique movies. Next, we'll dig a little deeper into specific columns to find and fix some other errors. Let's enable Column Profile. We'll check on the duration column. We can see that the minimum and maximum are quite extreme. There is a movie that's almost 11 hours long, as well as a movie that somehow has a duration of negative 50 minutes. So let's add a filter to our column to remove these extreme values. I will choose to exclude movies that are shorter than 60 minutes and longer than 4 hours. Now our column statistics look much more realistic. Finally, let's check the title year column. We can clearly see that there are some values that are incorrect, as movies weren't invented until 1895. Here, we can make use of the value distribution part of the column profile and replace these values by right-clicking the bars. Then, it's simply a matter of replacing it with the correct value. Although, keep in mind, it is always better to do replacements in the source file rather than in Power Query. This is because if multiple rows have the same value, they'll all be replaced with the value you specify, which will sometimes not be your intent. We've now cleaned up the title year column. It's now your turn to apply the data preview features to help transform your data in Power Query. Okay, so let's see the instruction. So we can use the column distribution feature to check our columns for the number of unique values as well as the number of distinct categories. 
So that is colon distribution to check the number of unique values as well as the number of distinct categories. So we want to check unique and distinct categories. So this can give us a great indica indication for which column contain any duplicate values and which column may have the wrong number of categories. More information about working with duplicates can be found in this article by Microsoft. So let's go back to the instruction. So our manager has asked us to check on the color column in our data sets. This seems to be an error there because someone mistyped some data. He is sure that we only stock 100 different colors of products, including the products which have no color. Use the feature in Power Query to help verify and fix the data sets. So I just load my Power BI files, which is colon distribution. So you can download these files under the link in the YouTube description. Do make sure to download those files also. So while that is coming up, let's continue reading the instruction. So we want to load this Power BI files workbook from the success folder on the desktop, then open the Power Query editor and enable the colon distribution data PV feature. If you are working on a previous workbook, make sure to remove the filter for accessories in case it is still applied. So let's look that up. So I have my, I prefer using my local Power BI machine here. I'll just go to so the data. There's one table has been loaded for that data. I can just edit here, go to edit query. So open that up in the power query feature. But they actually mentioned something. Oh, I have to make sure I point to the file. So in case you're having this same issue, you have just have to go. I'll show you how to do that right now. Filter for accessories. There's no any filter here. Sorted rows. Okay. I could just go to the home tab. Then Excel workbook. They have this folder data here. If I open that, that should solve the challenge. So, so this is the product data. Okay, let's see. Yeah, product data. Okay. Let's just refresh it. Mm, I'm not even supposed to. It's supposed to override this apply steps here. So what I could do is I could just I want to remove this. Let me delete this. I want to, I want to stick to this sheet here. To this product data. Let's do it one more time. Basic. I don't want to. So I'm trying to figure out how to solve this. I just want to point to same data sets. I know this apply step should be applied. But we're going to figure that out. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I think I find I figured it out. I'm not supposed to go to new source. I'm supposed to go to data source settings right here. And I point instead of pointing to the data sets from data cam platform, I point to it on my own local file here. You can see I could just use the basic you saying advanced. Mm. I just have to point to it on my local machine here. So that's how you start it. I'll just delete this. 
let me say advanced mm. let me go to basic i just go to my system here and get the url of the data sets it's quite funny let me figure this out So I copy the path, I've copied the path from my local system. I'll just paste it here. Uh oh, so you are using valid. Okay, So this is quite interesting. So now when you get a Power BI file from somewhere else, how do you then make sure? So if I click on Chase Source here. Mm. Oh, it's working fine now. Oh, cool. I think it's working fine now. Yeah, I think it's working fine now. Click on OK. Oh, I'm still getting this error. Okay, it's not a CSV document. What is it showing here? Oh, it's not picking the actual file type hmm, this is quite interesting to see it's an excel workbook but it's not seen as an excel workbook uh oh Let me see this first. If I go to advanced, I've pointed to the files on my local system. Okay, what about this new array preview? Let's see if this is going to work. Uh oh. What is the problem? Okay, how am I getting this error? URL is invalid. Okay, if I'm adding parts, delete parts, delete parts. How about this preview feature here? Oof, this is quite interesting. And I'm trying to figure this out. Hmm. Oh, it is a CSV file, but my the one I downloaded from Data Camp isn't saved as a CSV file. Okay, let me see if I change it to a CSV document if it's going to work. Is still not working? Okay, I think it's seen it as a CSV. Probably I'm choosing the wrong data type, document type. Okay, I'm waiting for you to finish loading. I think that should solve the problem. Okay. Even funny enough, the initial file is a comma separated file right from here.
why is it taking time to load right now so we try it again let's try it one more time so data source setting change source so let's have to point to another source i have to delete this and point to my own source which is not seeing it yet why the same url is invalid Oh, this is not fair. You have a pure view. Why? Why? You are releasing valid. Why is it not valid? I guess I just have to figure this out right now. I believe this is the solution, just pointing to a new file on my system. But I'm getting this error, which I'm not supposed to be getting. <laughs> And this is still loading. I'll just patiently wait for it to finish loading. And the goal is to try and figure this out without if I go back to the instruction, instruction says if you lost progress, start by loading the workbook from the exercise file on the desktop and open the power query editor. And that's what we did. Load this exercise file from the exercise folder on the desktop, then open the Power Query Editor and enable the colon distribution data preview feature. If you are working on a previous workbook, make sure to remove the filter for accessories in case it is still applied. Let's see. This is not yeah, I just close I won't save this file. So I'm looking at my files for my system. Oops, wrong file there. Let's reload this one more time. If I even go to, okay, let's go to column quality first. I'm going to open the next file to column quality if I'm still going to be facing the same challenge. And the, the challenge is actually that the data source that was used for this Power BI files from the source is not actually linked to my computer. So I need to point to, the, to a new data source. But it's quite easy to do. It's not, it's not, it's not usually that hard to do. All I have to do is just point to same products CSV file. Let me just go to some, some data. If I open it here, I should be facing the same challenge. You see, so I'm facing the same challenge. I don't have access to this product data. All I have to do is just point to the data from my system. Definitely, I'm going to be figuring this out right here, right now. It is not that hard. That is part of being a data analyst. 
Maybe because I'm not signed in. Let me actually sign in to my Power BI account. So I'm trying to sign into my Power BI account real quick. So I'm signed in into my account. Let's see. So let's go back to the data sets. Even if I go to data preview, I won't have access to the data sets. I have access to them. Wow. But why am I not having access to them in the Power Query Editor? Let's see. This is quite interesting. If I go to edit query, you see, I can see those data sets. If I go to the source, ooh, I think I, I made a mistake. Yeah, I think I figured out my mistake. I've done this before. Initially, if I want to change the source of the data set, I have to go back to the beginning of the data sets. And actually, let's see, point to the data sets. URL, which is not this, but let's see if I point to it from here. Even if I'm pointing to a URL, you should still see it on my system. Let's see that. Let's see, there's always a solution. Same value URL. Same value URL, right? If I do it on the door workbook. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Let's see this. If it's, this is going to work, <clears throat> so it is actually still loading. Even if it's the URL, I should have to point to my local computer. But I think what I can do is actually bring in a new file and just make sure all these steps is applied to it. But let's see if this is going to load finish it's still loading though you can see it right here but it's taking time i'm going to see if it's going to see it as a part as a url part like a website Hmm. So the actual URL is data camp web contents. I hope it sees my oh, is this a solution to this? This is quite interesting. So this is what we are actually fighting with on today's live stream. Why is it taking time to load? And the goal is to maintain these actual apply steps. I'm taking another way to solve this challenge. If 
can see it is still loading since y it's not supposed to take too much of time like that but it can really give the instruction on how to work with this Next, he said the current visual feature shows that there is something strange. They didn't give actually instruction and also connect to those files right from here. Try to see if it's going to load. It's quite funny how I just not loading. It's just rolling, 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 rolling. Oh, let me try the other solution I have. Okay. Edit query. Hmm. If I click on edit credentials for this file, okay, access web contents, Windows. If I go to Windows, use author. I think I should be able to do that right here. Anonymous, no, Windows, basic, web API organizational contents let's go to windows use my credit credentials hmm. what about basic Anonymous. I'm not supposed to be even using this part. Okay. Let's go to the source. The source is saying save the document, the web content, data camp, production, repository, data sets, blah, or blah, 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 stuff like that, those figures. But I'm trying to point to the data set on my system. If I go to data source settings here, I should be able to point data sources in the current file. Change source. Or oh, let me hold on. Let me come here. Clear up permission. Delete. There are no permission. Edit permission. Cancel. Export. I'm not exporting anything. Change data source. So if I'm doing basic with the URL, no. Let's go to advance or Okay. Hmm. I click on edit settings. Okay, what about these settings there? Eh? Edit settings. Error first. Okay. Man, I'm trying to, I've spent almost 
more than 20 minutes and it tries to figure this out. Oh. You query settings. Okay, I'm just using that up. This is the actual place to do this. Mm. Okay, that it is just rolling. I think this is a solution to it. It is just rolling, but I'm not sure how long it's going to take for it to connect to the data source, which is this file part on my local computer. I don't know when how long it's going to take and see. It is still rolling here, but it's not actually a CSV document, it is an Excel workbook. If I change it to an Excel workbook right here, right here, it is still rolling. I guess I just have to go solve this out first, sort it out for I actually want to know how to face this challenge. If I get a Power BI file from somebody else from another country over the internet. Uh, and I have access to the data source, maybe in CSV format or Excel workbook or whatever format it is. How do I easily connect it in Power Query without you get it now? So I'm definitely going to be waiting for this to roll over and see if it works or not. Probably that should be tomorrow on the live stream. I will come back on the live stream if I have a solution to it. I'll probably just go online and look for other solution to this same challenge. All right, so that will be the all for this live stream. We're actually learning something. Yes, we didn't do much today, but we actually learned how the particular challenge that meet or call to anyone using Power BI file or whatever, or connecting to data sources from files that you just hear it from somewhere. I will just have to stop the live stream here today, and I'll come back tomorrow, day 19, to provide a solution to that. I must have looked, definitely I will look for a solution to this before tomorrow. Probably I'll just do that after ending the live stream right now. All right, so thanks for staying to the end of the live stream. If you found value in this live stream, this video, this content, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel to support the channel. And I'll see you on the 19th live streaming journey. All right, thanks. Do have a wonderful, wonderful day ahead.